All right. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks to join the strategy and stock pick for the first quarter of 2024. So I'm Juan Se, I'll be the host for today. All right. So today's session is actually on the China and Hong Kong market. And you will be able to take a look at the agenda shortly on the slides later. All right. So we have some time. So uh, before we begin the session, uh, just sit back and relax. And uh, we will start shortly at 12 uh, p.m. the noon itself. Right, so just a gentle reminder also that we'll be taking questions from the QA. All right, so uh so if you have any questions to ask, do put them in the QA tab later. And uh you can actually upvote other questions as well. So we'll take priority on the upvoted questions as well. Okay, so we'll also be flashing our ongoing promotions. So if you have any interest uh, on the promotion that you see, just take a look at the QR code or you can search on the our home page on the promotion page as well. Right, so we'll start shortly in a while.
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining in for today's session of uh, Hong Kong Strategy as Top Pick. All right, so uh, our speaker is ready. So uh, without further ado, all right, so let's uh, slowly start the webinar. All right, so they're getting ready the slides first. So uh, my name is Wan I'm the host for today. So today's uh, sessions, we have uh, Mr. Louis Wong, who is the director of Philips Security Hong Kong, uh, covering the Hong Kong and China stock market. I'll look and top stock picks that he has for first quarter of 2024. So let us welcome Luis. Yeah. Hi, hi, uh, thanks, Han Zi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, may I wish everyone a very happy and prosperous new year as you are entering uh, 2024. Okay. Uh, as the uh, term uh, a picture speaks a thousand words uh, goes, I attach here, you can see on the first page of my my slides, uh, this picture of a very cloudy sky. You can see a lot of dark clouds with very little silver lining. I think this picture best uh, describes uh, the current uh, situation that the Hong Kong and China stock market are facing at the moment. That is uh, still a lot of headwinds. Uh, despite a little, some uh, uh, tailwinds are appearing. And uh, today I will also uh, go through what are the challenges and opportunities uh, in the market. Okay. Okay, this is the outline of my uh, presentation today. So there are uh, more than 10 topics I will uh, touch upon. And uh, last but not least, I will share with you our stock pick uh, for the first quarter. Okay, uh, the China and Hong Kong market uh, fare quite disappointingly uh, compared to the US market and other regional markets such as uh, Japan. Japan is seeing new highs, uh, the, the index. Uh, compared to India and Taiwan, China and Hong Kong also uh, far lag behind. The Shanghai Composite Index dropped uh, another 3% year to date, uh, up to yesterday, after falling 3.7% in 2023. So we uh, uh, noticed that this downtrend is still intact for uh, both China and Hong Kong market. Uh, despite entering the uh, new year. Okay. Uh, the Sunshine Component Index uh, dropped 13.5% last year. Uh, much worse perform much uh, much worse performance compared to the Shanghai Composite Index. And uh, in 2024, uh, so far it dropped another 5.9% uh, year to date. For the Hang Seng Index, last year, our Hang Seng Index dropped 13.8%. Uh, and uh, year to date, uh, up to yesterday, in fact, uh, the Hang Seng Index dropped another 5%. Uh, but this chart is up to yesterday. So if you have followed the, uh, the market today, uh, the Hang Seng has dropped uh, below 16,000 this morning and also uh, drop below the uh, the trough, uh, 15,972 points seen in December last year. So we saw a new uh, low uh, uh, since October 2022. Uh, that was the lowest level. Today, uh, the uh, Hang Seng Index dropped to close to six, uh, 15,900, uh, the lowest since uh, October 2022. Okay, and the Hang Seng Tech Index uh, fell 8.8% last year, but entering 2024, it performed uh, uh, rather badly, uh, dropped another 9.6% up to yesterday, uh, since the beginning of the year. Okay. Okay. Uh, reason for the performance is uh, the Hong Kong and China markets are facing a lot of uh, headwinds. There are still a lot of headwinds. For instance, geopolitical tensions. Uh, now you have two wars uh, going on in the world, uh, the Ukraine-Russian war and the Israel-Hamas uh, war. And US-China tension is intensifying given 
uh, friction over Taiwan, the South Sea, and uh, tech war. Okay, uh, 2024 is also an election pact year. Uh, it is calculated that uh, countries with uh, totaling 2 billion uh, population are uh, holding elections this year. So uh, election results may, uh, mm -hmm. I, I emphasize the word may, may uh, bring about uh, turbulence to uh, the stock market. Okay, And uh, China's post-COVID economic recovery remains bumpy and deflation fears are on the rise. So this headwind have been uh, uh, is impacting the uh, stock market since the second quarter last year. So there's uh, very little so far, very little uh, improvement uh, in our any there's uh, we do, we don't notice uh, uh, significant uh, pickup uh, in economic recovery uh, so far in China. Uh, and Chinese developers' debt woes continue amid renewed home sales softness and also a lack of aggressive stimulus. Adding to the uh, developers' debt woes, uh, another uh, debt crisis is also uh, causing a concern to investors is uh, China's provincial government's hidden debt. I'll go further into details later about the uh, the size uh, of uh, uh, the provincial government's debt and uh, return of regulatory uncertainty. Uh, one example lately is the uh, guideline, the amended rules on online games uh, that cause uh, sell-off among Tencent, Netties and other uh, uh, games publishers. Okay, uh, another uh, negative factor, uh, another headwind is uh, exodus of international capital, uh, outflow of uh, uh, foreign capital from China, as well as domestic capital outflow, or not only uh, I I I international capital, but also uh, domestic capital as well. Okay. Um, China's central government debt is only accounts for only 20% of the uh, GDP, which is not uh, uh, huge, but total local government debts are estimated at nearing 38.75 trillion yuan, uh, equivalent to 5.31 trillion US dollar. Okay, and in addition to that, uh, the so called LGFVs are, uh, is more a concern because it could be a source of volatility in China's financial system over the medium term. LGFV stand for local government financing vehicles. So these are aside from uh, the debt uh, uh, issued by uh, local governments. Uh, these are local government financing vehicles uh, and uh, uh, they, they may also uh, owe to other debtors uh, a lot of money. Uh, there are two types of LGFV quintessential and hybrid. Although both are local government-owned entities, uh, the hybrid LGFV have more diversified holdings and behave like state-owned enterprises. For example, a hybrid LGFV may finance public housing as a local government would do, but it can also invest in commercial uh, property, just as a private company can. So, uh, the scope they operate is wider and the control or is less transparent uh, uh, compared to the uh, the former, the quintessential uh, LGFV. Uh, the risk of LGFV default is uh, concentrated in these hybrid LGFVs. And since the debt, uh, some of the debts are hidden debt, so uh, it the, the actual amount is not disclosed. Uh, the actual amount owed by uh, these provincial governments hybrid LGFVs. Okay, uh, and LGFVs debt repayment issues uh, relate to a sharp drop in land sale revenues because a lot of provincial government uh, rely on land sale revenues to uh, uh, sustain their. Uh, expenses okay 
uh, and also caps on the ability to tap alternative sources of funding. Uh, the inability to raise new money also uh, re uh, uh, restrain them from uh, paying their debts. Uh, so LGT LGFE's debt repayment issues relate to a sharp drop in land sale revenues uh, seen in the last two years uh, in the downturn of the property market. Okay, I cite, I quoted here one example of uh, regulatory uncertainty. Uh, the National Press and Publication Administration of China, MPPA, recently published a guideline titled Measures for the Administration of Online Games. Uh, this was published uh, last December uh, 2023, uh, representing the largest regulatory changes since additional restrictions were imposed on Chinese youth gamers in September 2021. And when this was uh, announced, it caused a, a sharp sell-off um, among uh, online games operators, publishers, such as Tencent, uh, NetEase, and other uh, games uh, publishers. The draft states that online games should not include reward mechanics that encourage users to overspend such as providing users with additional in-game rewards by locking in each day. Currently, for uh, users who uh, lock in every day, they are given additional in-game rewards. So this will be uh, banned uh, in future if the draft uh, becomes uh, law. Okay, uh, And also purchasing an in-game item for the first time, uh, uh, users will be given some reward. Uh, this will not be allowed in future. Or purchasing an in-game item or service on a regular basis, uh, these, uh, these activities will also be uh, banned. Game publishers should not provide or condone the behavior of trading virtual in-game items through speculative uh, auctions. I uh, read from the report some of the in-game items, the so-called weapons, uh, uh, Wu Qi, uh, the very uh, unique one, rare one, could be traded for up to uh, millions of uh, renminbi, millions uh, renminbi in uh, in the uh, in the uh, secondary market uh, of uh, virtual in-game items, uh, secondary market. So going forward. Uh, game publishers should not provide or condone uh, this kind of behavior. And publishers will also be required to warn users with a pop-up if they start to spend too much and set a cap on in-game spending, which is outlined in the terms of service. So uh, uh, all in all, the, uh, the draft uh, uh, would impact what is the largest potential impact will come from a spending cap on users, especially those games, uh, as, especially those high ARPU games. That means uh, the average revenue per user uh, is a high one. But uh, high DAU, daily active users, and low ARPU games will be less impacted. Uh, by the new draft, okay, uh, the high ARPU games will be uh, affected more. So this will affect the uh, profitability of companies like Tencent and NetEase, okay. Um, regarding exodus of international capital, uh, according to China State Administration of Foreign Exchange, the net capital outflow reached 53.9 billion US dollar in September last year. The largest amount since January 20, uh, should be 2016, uh, yeah, 2016, when China locked the net in outflow of 55.8 billion, triggered by a sudden devaluation of the yuan called the renminbi shock uh, in 2016. But last September, the, uh, the renminbi, although it's still uh, weakening, uh, uh, we did not see a sharp devaluation. So it, it was not really caused by uh, the devaluation, the yuan devaluation this time round. It's caused by other uh, factors, namely com foreign companies are scaling back their operations in China and repatriating uh, funds 
uh, back to their home country. And also wealthy Chinese are shifting funds abroad. I think uh, Singapore benefits from this uh, fund outflow from China. Uh, wealthy Chinese are uh, either moving their assets to Singapore or setting up uh, family offices uh, in Singapore. Uh, besides, uh, the US has moved to restrict American investment in mainland China and Beijing, uh, Beijing's revision of its anti-espionage law in July last year, which expanded the scope of targets for espionage, may also have contributed to this capital outflow uh, fleeing the country. Um, to stanch the flow, the China Securities Regulatory Commission has issued a notice banning domestic brokerages from taking on new mainland clients for offshore trading. It also intends to impose restrictions on new overseas investments by existing customers on the mainland. Brokerage houses, including their overseas divisions, are ordered to shut down apps and websites aimed at mainland investors. So this has a negative uh, impact on the Hong Kong market as uh, 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 the, the cram down on uh, mainland clients trading. They, they, they are still uh, able to trade Hong Kong stocks via the Stock Connect. Uh, but for uh, uh, it is believed that uh, in the past, a lot of uh, uh, mainland uh, funds are investing directly into uh, the Hong Kong market, not via uh, the uh, the stock connect. Actually, they uh, remit the money to Hong Kong and then uh, invest either in the property market or the stock market or in other overseas market via Hong Kong. So with this um, uh, 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 being uh, uh, banned, uh, it also has a, a negative uh, impact on the Hong Kong stock market. Okay, uh, although the stock market do have uh, some tailwinds, but uh, not many. Uh, first of all, U.S. rate hike cycle is nearing an end. Uh, it, the market is expecting rate cut uh, by the Fed, U.S. Federal Reserve this year, uh, as early as March, if not March, maybe uh, May or June. And then uh, U.S. recession appears less likely. There were, there were fears that the U.S. Uh, may see, uh, economy may be heading uh, for a hard lending uh, recession. But uh, so far, uh, economic data uh, shows that uh, recession uh, now becomes less likely uh, for, the US, for the U.S. And uh, the Chinese Yuan also seems to be st stabilizing. Uh, now is uh, has strengthened to seven point one around seven point one uh, to one US dollar. Uh, the weakest uh, level yeah, it was it uh, uh, depreciated to between seven point three and seven point four to one US dollar. Now uh, it has strengthened to around seven point one, and then uh, with yuan strengthening, uh, the PPOC People Banks of China. We have more room for more RRR stands for reserve requirement ratio, uh, RRR cut as well as interest rate cut. Actually, uh, entering 2024, uh, the market uh, was expecting uh, in, uh, a cut in the M MP uh, in the MLF uh, medium uh, loan facility interest rate yesterday, uh, but the PBOC disappointed the market uh, with no uh, move yesterday. Uh, the MLF interest rate remained uh, unchanged uh, when they uh, conducted MLF operations yesterday. Okay, uh, But there's still uh, hope that the PBOC will uh, cut RRR and interest rate again in the first quarter. Okay, uh, And the China's, China's Politburo meeting held late last year uh, uh, did raise expectations for more economic st uh, stimulus. I'll go into uh, more details later about uh, the uh, takeaway from the Politburo meeting uh, held late last year. Okay, um, how Fed pivot? Pivot uh, stands for a change, a turnaround in the uh, rate hike cycle uh, by the Fed. 
uh, now mark, the market is expecting uh, the Fed uh, to start cutting interest rate uh, this year. Uh, how Fed pivot uh, affects the stock market? Actually, we observed that when the Fed interest rate uh, went up, uh, uh, say for instance, in uh, when uh, the Fed interest rate rose from 3% in September 1992 to 6.5% in May 2000, the stock market also uh, rose uh, in tandem. Uh, uh, and when the Fed started to cut interest rate from 6.5% in May 2000 to 1% in June 2000, uh, 2003, after the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the dot com bubble burst, uh, the internet, uh, the dot com bubble burst in two, year 2000, the stock market actually uh, fell uh, uh, when the Fed uh, cut interest rate. And then, uh, starting from June 2003, the Fed uh, raised interest rates again this time from 1% to 5.25% uh, in, in June 2006. And during this period, uh, the S&P 500 also uh, rose, uh, also rose, okay? Um, then in June 2006, the Fed cut interest rate again from 5.25% to 0.25% in December 2008. And this time round, the stock market, uh, but this time round, the stock market uh, also dropped. Uh, you can see here, uh, the arrow points to uh, here. Uh, the stock S&P 500 dropped when the Fed cut interest rate. Okay, uh, so last year, you remember the Fed uh, raised interest rate uh, 11 times in a row and the uh, uh, U.S. stock market uh, rose to new record high despite the rate cut, okay? So this is the, uh, the same chart uh, that I showed you. Okay, uh, why is it so? Uh, uh, general belief is that when uh, the central bank raise interest rate, uh, the stock market uh, will fall uh, normally, but how, how come there's a, uh, a, 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 a opposite kind of uh, uh, direction? Uh, uh, because it is believed that when the interest rate rises, the mark, the economy is doing, is getting uh, overheated, is growing uh, in a faster pace. So that uh, benefits the stock market. Okay, uh, when the interest rate holds on a relatively low rate, uh, the stock market will also rise. But on the contrary, when uh, the Fed uh, cut interest rate, that means the uh, economic growth starts to decelerate, uh, starts to slow down, and uh, the market uh, always runs ahead of the economy. So when investors expect uh, a slowdown, uh, they uh, sell their stock holding. Uh, and cause the stock market to uh, to fall. Okay, but uh, we noticed last year uh, uh, the Hang Seng Index uh, more or less follows the first and second phenomena uh, on the U.S. market. However, uh, since two thousand one nine, uh, uh, a decoupling has occurred. That means uh, uh, when the U.S. market uh, went up since two thousand one nine, the Hang Seng Index had actually uh, fell fallen uh, four years in a row. Uh, uh, it was the first time in the history of the Hang Seng Index uh, that the uh, the index uh, fell four years in a row. It has never happened before. So uh, the reason for that is, as I have explained earlier, uh, due to a lot of uh, headwinds uh, the Hong Kong uh, market uh, was facing in the last uh four years uh, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And then uh, the subsequent economic recovery that uh, disappoints uh, investors. Okay. Um, uh, in the past, the Hang Seng Index uh, more or less follows the US. It's because uh, the Hong Kong dollar is pegged to the US dollar, which means US monetary policies uh, also affect Hong Kong uh, in many ways. 
such as home purchasing and corporate financing costs. So when the Fed uh, raised interest rates, uh, Hong Kong, our uh, uh, MA, our Monetary Authority, uh, uh, we have to follow suit because uh, the Hong Kong dollar is back to the US dollar. In order to uh, maintain the stability of the Hong Kong dollar, we have to follow uh, US monetary policies. Okay. Uh, the decoupling occurs because the Chinese economy uh, is on a downtrend since 2019, and companies from mainland China now accounted for 77% of Hong Kong EX market uh, capitalization. Okay. Um, now we are talking about this Fed uh, pivot uh, that you, the uh, Federal Reserve uh, uh, is expected to cut interest rates starting uh, uh, entering 2024. So in December uh, 2023, uh, the recent, recently uh, 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 announced data, uh, US CPI, uh, the, the growth rate decelerated, year on year growth rate decelerated to 3.4%. And uh, in the last three FOMC meeting, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve kept rates unchanged and signal rate cuts for 2024. Um, and soft lending is within reach as inflation slows faster than expected and the labor market remains largely intact, stocking optimism that rate cuts will get underway as early as March 2024. Okay, if the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve starts to cut interest rate, it will have a positive bearing on China and Hong Kong stock market in the following ways. Uh, first, U.S. T-bond yield is used by analysts as the risk-free rate of return when valuing the market or an in individual stock. So when risk-free rate of return falls, it will bring down fixed income investment return, such as term deposit rates and bond yield, making them less, less attractive. So funds looking for better return may likely flow into the stock market. Among global stock markets, the Hang Seng Index estimated price to earnings ratio, uh, the forward PE, is less than eight times substantially lower than its historical average. Its historical average is around 10 times. And the record low is about 6.7 times. So now it's only uh, less than two times uh, above its record low. Uh, the valuation of the Hang Seng Index is uh, quite cheap at the moment. And under discounted cash flow DCF valuation method, when the discount rate, which stands for the risk-free rate of return falls, company valuation will rise. Uh, thirdly, entering the interest rate cycle, the US dollar will become less attractive and non-US currencies such as uh, the renminbi, the yuan, are expected to uh, strengthen and rebound, which may result in an upward revaluation of renminbi denominated assets, including stocks. I mentioned earlier that now mainland companies account for 77% of the Hong Kong stock market in terms of uh, market capitalization. So uh, uh, strengthening renminbi may lend support to uh, the stock market. As US-China interest rate spread narrows, the PBOC will have more room to cut interest rates, which will lend support to the economy. Okay, so overall, uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, the expected U.S. Fed pivot, uh, the uh, rate cut cycle will uh, have a positive impact on China and Hong Kong, especially Hong Kong. Okay, uh, the U.S. going to hold its presidential election later this year. So, how presidential election affects the stock market? Uh, our statistics show that in the past 18 presidential elections, only four times have seen a decrease, and two of them are due to uh, financial crisis. Uh, the dot-com bubble that happened, that occurred in two, year 2000, and also the subprime uh, mortgage crisis. So uh, uh, by majority, uh, the stock market will tend to rise, uh, where, uh, in the year of uh, the U.S. presidential election. Okay, uh, if recession uh, occurs, 
So how will it will how will it affect the stock market? Uh, although the U.S. economy is doing well with GDP growing at an annualized rate of 4.9% in the third quarter of 2023, the current inverted yield curve may still be signaling a recession. Uh, uh, in the past, this inverted yield curve was quite accurate in predicting a recession. So there's still chance that, uh, although not very high chance, there's still a possibility that U.S. may the U.S. economy may uh, be uh, entering a recession. And if that really happens, uh, based on historical statistics, during the first six months in the recession, the S&P 500 average performance would decline about 18%, and the average 12 months forward PE would drop to around about 13 times. Currently, uh, it is 20, more than 21 times. So uh, the U.S. stock uh, uh, is quite pricey at the moment. But provide if there's no recession and if the U.S., uh, the Fed, uh, will uh, start cutting interest rate this year, so we don't expect a very deep correction. There, we, we do expect correction in the U.S. market after the rally uh, in late 2023. Uh, actually, we already uh, 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 saw that in, uh, in early January. Uh, uh, yet, if there's no uh, severe recession, uh, we don't expect a deep correction more than we don't expect a, a correction more than twenty percent uh, in the U.S. market. Okay, now uh, let's come to China's economic review. Uh, let's look at the. Uh, CPI and BPI, uh, which signals defla deflation. Okay, uh, China's CPI hits three-year low in December, uh, far below the three percent official annual target, fueling deflation fears. In addition, as a leading indicator, China's producer price index PPI also saw the fifteenth straight month of decline. You can see. Uh, in this chart on the uh, uh, right hand side, uh, on the uh, uh, that uh, PPI uh, dropped fifteen months in a row. So December was the fifteen straight months of decline. Okay, um, initially deflation may pos may positively impact consumers because it increases their purchasing power. However. An entrenched period, if it goes on for too long, an entrenched period of deflation may create a vicious cycle that starts with a slowdown in consumer spending, followed by business cutbacks and layoffs, leading to high unemployment, less spending, and more defaults. Okay, uh, To fight the pernicious and devastating efforts of deflation, central bank banks may need to use extreme measures and innovative tools to con combat deflation in their co in their economies. Okay. Um, China's official manufacturing PMI also uh, did not fare so well. You can see uh, in the chart here, uh, it was it shrank for last three months and also at a quicker pace. Uh, from 49.5, dropping to 49.4 in November last year, and to 49 uh, in December last year. Uh, and China's official non-manufacturing PMI, which includes services and construction, likely rebounded to 50.4 from in December, from 50.2 in November last year. Yet, data showed the services sector contracted in the last two months. So construction uh, holds up uh, uh, with the support of more infrastructure uh, investment, uh, but services uh, PMI uh, contra uh, show contraction in the last two months. Uh, it means more stimulus will be needed to shore up economic growth and restore confidence. We're still expecting more uh, economic stimulus. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, loan growth, in December last year, renminbi loans increased by 1.17 trillion yuan 
which was lower than market expectations of 1.35 trillion yuan, and also a decree decrease of 240.1 billion yuan uh, year on year. Um, in 2023, renminbi loans increased by 22.75 trillion, an increase of 1.31 uh, trillion. Uh, uh, the increase was also uh, lower than market expectations. However, the M1, M2 scissors gap narrow, you can see uh, from the table on the right hand side. Uh, in the November last year, the scissors gap uh, was uh, rose to as much as 9.1%. And now in December, it fell back to 8.4%. Uh, with the uh, widening scissors gap, uh, pe people will tend to uh, uh, put their money, leave their money with the bank, uh, with bank deposits rather than uh, spending uh, the, the money because deflation also uh, changes the uh the the in the spending pattern will affect the uh, cons con uh, consumption pattern of uh, consumers because things are getting cheaper so consumers will uh, tend to uh, procrastinate their uh their uh, consumption to a later stage and this is uh negative to this is not favorable to uh retail sales as well as uh uh, con consumption, okay, as people prefer to uh, save uh, instead of uh, spend or invest uh, when the scissors gap widened. But on the con on the contrary, when scissors gap when the scissors gap narrow, people will tend to uh, spend more and also invest more. Okay. Um. Now look, let's look at the San Tou Ma Che, uh, the Troika, uh, fixed asset investment, uh, industrial output, and retail sales. In November, they have not released the December data yet. Uh, so November, in November last year, the added value of industrial enterprises above designated size increased by 6.6% uh, year on year, beating uh, expectation of 5.7% growth and the growth rate accelerated by two percentage points from October last year. However, the total retail sales of consumer goods increased by 10.1% uh, year on year, much lower than the expected 12.5% growth. And uh, although it's 2.5 percentage points faster than October, uh, yet it's lower than uh, market expectation. In addition, national fixed asset investment growth in the first 11 months last year was only 2.9%, a meager 2.9%, uh, uh, and remaining flat compared to the first 10 months, uh, uh, also lower than expected 3% 3, 3 growth. Uh, reason behind is uh, it was dragged down by real estate development investment, which fell 9.4% in, uh, in the first 11 months last year, uh, which is also worse than market expectations. Okay, uh, 2024 economic outlook. Uh, last year, uh, fourth quarter, they have not re uh, 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 announced their fourth quarter GDP data yet. Uh, we expect China's Q4 uh, two, uh, two, 2023 GDP uh, will grow by 5.3% uh, year, year on year versus 4.9% in the third quarter. Uh, so for the whole year, GDP growth is seen at 5.2%, uh, meeting the government's annual growth rate, uh, annual growth target of 5%, partly helped by the previous year's low base effect which was marked by COVID-19 lockdowns, uh, the low base effect in 2022. Um, GDP growth uh, this year is likely to slow to 4.6% from 5.2% uh, uh, last year. And it is expected to cool further to 4.5% in 2025. Okay. Uh, we also noticed a slight pickup in exports uh, seen in the last two months of 2023, uh, but this is unlikely to 
kindle a quick turnaround in weak domestic activity. Okay, uh, infl inflation uh, this year is expected uh, just, uh, this, this may be a, a, a too optimistic uh, projection because you are expecting inflation of 1%. Uh, but now it's still negative. Uh, uh, and in 2025, inflation may rise further to 1.6%. Uh, commercial banks seen cutting benchmark lending rate by 10 uh, basis points in uh, first quarter. Uh, this is a uh, uh, market projection uh, that commercial banks will uh, cut their benchmark lending rates um, by but by only 10 basis points uh, in first quarter. Okay, uh, what are the takeaways from China's Central Economic uh, Poly uh, Conference? Okay, uh, consumption is playing an increasingly important role in driving growth in China, with consumer spending contributing 83.2% to economic growth in the first three quarters. Uh, the tech-intensive green trio of uh, solar batteries, lithium iron batteries, and electric vehicles have replaced apparel, home appliances, and furniture to become the top drivers of China's foreign trade. And the total export value of these products jumped 41.7% year on year in the first uh, three quarters of the year. Uh, uh, this is also due to a uh, rather low base in 2022. Uh, uh, to further revive the economy, China still has to overcome some difficulties and challenges, including a lack of e effective demand, overcapacity in some sector, uh, lackluster social expectation, and certain risks and hidden uh, problems as well. Okay. Uh, overall, favorable conditions outweigh unfavorable con uh, factors in China's development, and the favorable uh, and the fundamental trend of the econom economic recovery and long-term positive outlook has not changed. Uh, the meeting said uh, the uh, China Central Economic Work Conference uh, stated that uh, the fundamental trend of the of the economic recovery and the long-term positive outlook has not changed, uh, urging stronger uh, confidence from the people. Okay. Um, regarding uh, this year, it should be this year, regarding this year, because when uh, the, the Central Economic Work Conference was held last year, so they stated regarding uh, next year's economic work, the meeting called for efforts to pursue progress while ensuring stability, consolidate stability through progress, and establish the new before abolishing the old. Uh, uh, so uh, China has, uh, uh, unlike in 2008 and 2009, uh, when China's uh, 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 put aside four trillion, uh, uh, make four trillion yuan uh, stimulus stimulus plan, stimulus package uh, to uh, uh, support the economy. The, but this time round, uh, the Chinese government is uh, taking a very cautious and prudential uh, attitude in uh, launching stimulus package. So we don't expect. Uh, the kind, the four, the trillions are uh, kind of uh, 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 stimulus package seen in 2008 and 2009. Okay, uh, the Central Economic Work Conference stressed that a prudent monetary policy should be flexible, appropriate, precise, and effective. And it called for guiding finance, financial institutions to step up support for technological innovation, green transformation, and other fields, and maintaining the stability of the renminbi exchange rate at a reasonable and balanced level. It also stressed the need to effectively remove the obstacles for foreigners to come to Hong Kong, uh, to China for business, study, and tourism. Efforts must be made to actively and steadily resolve real estate risk and meet the reasonable financing needs of different real estate enterprises, uh, aiming to promote the stable and healthy development of the real estate market. 
Okay, uh, now come to the Yuan, uh, Renminbi's outlook. As the US Fed is expected to start cutting interest rate in 2024, the US dollar may weaken further. And uh, actually the US uh, dollar index has uh, retreated uh, from uh, around 104 to uh, around 101, 102. And we expect the US dollar to weaken further uh, as the uh, US Fed uh, is expected to start cutting interest rate this year. And the interest rate gap between China and the US will gradually, gradually narrow, easing the downward pressure on Yuan. Um, we also notice a widening gap between China's fix. Uh, this fixing is the official renminbi exchange rate uh, uh, versus the US dollar. And uh, it's for the last few months, it is uh, considerably higher than the estimate. Uh, the fix is higher than estimate. Uh, why is it so? It signals that the authority wants Yuan's pace of decline to be as low as possible. So by estimate, the actual rate should fall to say, for instance, 7.05. But the fix was, the, it was fixed at 7.1. So the widening gap uh, signals that the authority doesn't want to see Yuan uh, de uh, de declining uh, so fast, okay? And the people, people, uh, People's Bank of China stepped up Yuan support recently after rating agency Moody's cut China's outlook to negative, okay? Uh, according to the Central Financial Work Conference held in October 2023, more effort should be devoted to strengthening foreign exchange market man management and maintaining the basic start stability of the renminbi exchange rate at a reasonable and balanced level. Um, the U.S. dollar to renminbi rate is expected to, for this year, uh, we expect the U.S. dollar to uh, renminbi rate uh, to fluctuate between 7.05 and 7.3. Uh, 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 if, if the yuan will depreciate again, we uh, expect support around 7.3. Uh, if it uh, appreciate, we also expect resistance uh, for the yuan around 7.05 to one US dollar. Uh, also, it's not in the best interest of China to see uh, the renminbi appreciate too much because it will uh, affect its uh, exports. Uh, okay, uh, so the uh, yuan, uh, uh, this is offshore yuan exchange rate uh, against the US dollar. It depreciated, it weakened to uh, close to 7.4 to 1 US dollar, dollar between July and August last year. And since then, uh, uh, as the market expects the Fed uh, to start cutting interest rate uh, and the US dollar start uh, weakening, uh, you see the uh, Yuan appreciating from, above, uh, from below 7.3 to above 7.1. Now it's uh, 7.19, okay? Our index target for uh, first quarter, okay? We expect the Shanghai Composite Index to uh, fluctuate between uh, 2,800 and 3,050, 2,800 and 3,050, okay? Uh, the Shenzhen Composite Index, we expect uh, the uh, the range, uh, uh, here I have uh, not uh, included the range, the range to be between um, 8,700 and 9,000, uh, 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 9,200, uh, okay? So 500 uh, points uh, range expected, okay? Hang Seng Index, we expect the range a range between uh, 14,950 to uh, 17,500. Uh, 500. Near term support uh, around 16,000 has been uh, breached today. Uh, this morning, the Hang Seng Index has dropped below 16,000, and the next support level uh, will be 15,400. Uh, key support will be 
14,950, which was the uh, uh, the low seen in October 2022, before the announcement of the opening up, uh, the uh, the uh, reopening of the uh, of the economy after the, the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, uh, whether will uh, the index Hang Seng Index will uh, uh, fall to that level? remains to be seen uh, but at the uh, in the near term it's very likely that it will test uh, 15,400 uh, when it fails to hold about 16,000. Uh, near term resistance is seen at 16,750. Next resistance is 17,100 and key resistance will be around 17,500. Okay. Um, for the Hang Seng Tech Index, uh, the near-term support is 3,310. Next support level is 3,240. Uh, actually, recently it has dropped below uh, the 3,400 uh, level, uh, support level, and now it's testing 3,300. If it drops below 3,300, next support level will be 3,240. Key support would be 3,000. Uh, Near-term resistance is expected around 3,540. Next resistance level, 3,660. Uh, 3, and key resistance is 3,800. Okay. Um, in view of uh, the market uncertainties of uh, the many headwinds that we are still facing, we suggest investing in Hong Kong defensive companies such as utilities and telecom operators uh, for the reason that they are paying attractive dividend, current dividend yield uh, between 5 to 7%, and the PB ratio valuation uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, price to book ratio is relatively low. Uh, due to substantial price drop amid the high interest rate environment. And among the 2,600 odd companies listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, there are about 300 Hong Kong local companies. And among these, around 190 companies pay dividends. And of this 190, around 70 companies generate sustainable free cash flow, have reputable business operations, high quality management, and most importantly, have a long-term track record of paying out dividends. So uh, we uh, suggest uh, we uh, 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 investors to invest in Hong Kong defensive companies, such as utilities and telecom operators. Okay, uh, there are two uh, stock picks. One, uh, the power assets. Uh, the ticket is 0, 0, 0, 0, 006 uh, dot Hong Kong. Uh, the company is a global investor in energy and utility related business. Uh, it's a uh, company owned by uh, Li Ka Shing. Uh, it's uh, 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 one of the companies in the uh, Li Ka Shing staples of companies. Uh, and it uh, hosts uh, Hong Kong Electric, uh, which is the uh, uh, electricity supplier in Hong Kong. And for power assets, it has interest in the transmission of electricity, uh, gas and oil, the distribution of electricity and gas, and the generation of energy from thermal waste and other renewable sources. Uh, the company is or was originated from Hong Kong over a century ago. So it's a 100-year-old company, Bai Nian Chi Ye. Uh, the group also has a presence today in the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, mainland China, etc., bringing clean, reliable, and affordable energy to about 19.5 million homes and businesses. And the bulk of its business derives from its interest in uh, 520,100 kilometers of power, gas, and oil networks, supplemented by investments in around 9,800 megawatt of power generation facilities. Okay, uh, financial performance for the six months ended 30 June 2023, that is the first half uh, of uh, 2023, 
net profit attributable to shareholders amounted to 2.959 billion Hong Kong dollar, increasing 3.1% uh, year, year over year. Earning per share amounted to 1.39 Hong Kong dollar, increasing also 3% uh, year on year. And the current dividend yield is 6.2%. The current uh, price to book ratio is 1.1 times, which is about uh, minus one standard deviation, uh, lower than its five-year average of 1.19 times. Okay. Uh, power assets, uh, the business outlook, uh, UK uh, Kingdom portfolio uh, is UK Power Networks, UKPN, commenced a new five-year price control period in April last year. And the company was awarded a 25% increase in actual expenditure compared with the previous period to invest in the electric steam network to cater to the rollout of electric vehicles heat pumps and renewables energy generation. As you may be aware, inflation in the UK is also very uh, severe. So for utility company, uh, an inflationary environment uh, is more favorable because they are, uh, uh, it's easier for them to uh, raise uh, their, uh, their, their, their fees as well as the, uh, the uh, awarded uh, uh, expenditure uh, by the government. Okay, another company in its, uni in its United Kingdom portfolio, uh, that is Northern Gas Networks, NGN, uh, is ongoing emphasis on customer satisfaction yielded high scores in surveys conducted by the regulator of GEM. Uh, Wales and West Utilities, WWU, uh, has met all its regulatory performance targets. So it's performing uh, well up to, uh, up to uh, it meet uh, all the performance targets. And C-Bank Power started a long-term full tolling agreement with a single customer. So uh, which implies that uh, uh, the uh, future uh, income uh, will remain stable uh, with this long-term full tolling agreement with a single customer. Okay, with regard to its Hong Kong portfolio, as I mentioned, it owns Hong Kong Electric. Uh, Hong Kong Electric is uh, discussing with the Hong Kong SAR government, uh, uh, which has commenced on the 2024 to 2028 development plan and the interim review of the current scheme of control agreement. Uh, usually under the scheme of control agreement, uh, the more the company invests in uh, its uh, 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 fixed uh, uh, expend, uh, spend more uh, fixed expenditure, uh, the more uh, tariff it is allowed to uh, raise uh, uh, charge to its customer. So uh, invest more, uh, they can they will be allowed to uh, raise the tariff. So uh, we expect a tariff uh, uh, raise uh, hike uh, in the next development plan in the next uh, uh, five years uh, period from 2024 to 2028. Okay, uh, regarding uh, its Australian portfolio, the group's electricity distribution businesses continue to migrate and augment network capabilities to accommodate large scale solar generation. And one focus area is providing battery solid storage for solar power in Australia. Okay, uh, you can see the share price uh, outperformed the Hang Seng Index. Uh, now is trading around 45, 46 Hong Kong dollars, yet still yielding more than 6% uh, dividend yield. So we do expect, and uh, the price to book value is only 1.1 times. Uh, equivalent equivalent to minus one uh, PB uh, price to uh, uh, minus one standard deviation. So we expect it uh, its share price to uh, test the peak uh, seen in May two o two two close to fifty Hong Kong dollars. Uh, so another ten percent upside. Uh, our target is a ten percent upside plus six uh, percent dividend yield. Okay. Uh, the other stock pick, uh, the company we pick 
uh, is Hong Kong T Trust, uh, Hong Kong Telecom. Uh, the stock code is 6823.hk. It is a technology, media, and telecommunication leader with more than 150 years of history in Hong Kong. So in the past, uh, uh, the uh, it was originated from the uh, Hong Kong Telephone, uh, from, the, from this company uh, called Hong Kong Telephone. Now uh, it has uh, diversified uh, into uh, different uh, business uh, streams. It's end-to-end -end enterprise solutions, make it a market-leading digital transformation partner of choice for business. Uh, its businesses primarily consist of local TSS services, uh, uh, telecom services, uh, local data services, pay TV services, it owns the Now TV in Hong Kong, local telephony services, and international telecommunication services. So for the six months ended 30 June 2023, total revenue excluding mobile product sales increased by 3% to 15.24 billion Hong Kong dollars, reflecting the delivery of digital transformation projects for enterprise and government customers, and also continued strong demand for its fiber services and gradual recovery in roaming revenue and further momentum in 5G adoption in Hong Kong. Um, total revenue grew by 2% to 16.4 billion if uh, mobile product sales are included. Uh, however, last year, mobile product sales uh, was quite was uh, was rather soft uh, last year as demand for new handphones uh, there was not very strong uh, demand for uh, uh, new handphones total EBITDA um, uh, earnings before interest uh, tax uh, depreciation amortization increased by three percent to six more than six billion Hong Kong dollar last year uh, in the first half last year spurred by sustained cost efficiency initiatives across the group. Adjusted funds flow increased by 2.2% to 2.429 billion uh, Hong Kong dollar. So very strong uh, cash fund flow that enables it to pay uh, dividends, uh, uh, pay uh, decent dividend to its shareholders. Profit attributable to holders of its share staple units uh, is a trust, is a uh, share staple, uh, increased by 2.2% to 1.952 billion uh, Hong Kong dollars. And its current dividend yield is even higher than uh, Hong, uh, the power, uh, 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 power assets uh, with 7.8% dividend yield. Okay. Uh, business outlook, mobile business. Uh, growth in services revenue will continue to accelerate as travel resumes with full border reopening between Hong Kong and China, uh, creating upward momentum for local consumption and travel related spending. Uh, we see, uh, uh, we do see more tourists uh, from mainland China coming to Hong Kong after the uh, uh, border reopening. And recently, we see an even uh, 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 more a uh, greater quantity of uh, I mean uh, more uh, Hong Kongers going to the so-called uh, Greater Bay, uh, Sunshan and the uh, neighboring area uh, in southern China uh, to spend their weekends. So this will create uh, more travel related spending in mobile uh, services. Uh, for uh, Hong Kong T, Hong Kong Telecom. Um, with regard to enterprise services, uh, we expect its enterprise services to remain robust as enterprises in Hong Kong, as well as in, as in mainland China, uh, accelerate upgrades to their infrastructure and systems. Okay. Uh, in terms of broadband businesses, future growth will be spurred by further uptake of fiber connectivity and value-added services such as home Wi-Fi solutions. Uh, and re with regard to its pay TV business, uh, we expect it will continue to deliver a steady performance as the appeal of Now TV's diverse content offering 
in particular live sport events has driven steady growth in customer subscription, particularly in the hospitality sector. Okay. Uh, the share price also outperformed the Hang Seng Index and the uh, broad market. Uh, we expect uh, it to uh, test the uh, high, the peak scene in February last year, around uh, $10, 15 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, so about 6% upside together with a seven, uh, eight, close to 8% uh, dividend yield. So uh, we are also expecting a double digit uh, return uh, for uh, HKT Trust. Okay, uh, that ends my presentation uh, here. So we'll move on to the five side chat. Oh, yes. Hi, thanks, Luis. Uh, thank you for the great presentation. And uh, uh, we'll now proceed with the five side chat before we will begin the QA session. All right. So, just basically, want to just discuss some of the interesting topics that might have been happening recently before we engage the uh, direct questions that uh, the audience might have. During this time, uh, the audience can also uh, ask more of your questions that you might have on the Q&A box and upvote your preferred questions so that we can actually target the, uh, the higher upvoted questions first. Right, so for the first one for uh, Luis, uh, maybe I'll just discuss on, you mentioned about the regulations by the China government on the gaming industry. So for example, Tencent and NetEase were the most impacted during the recent uh, uh, impact, uh, the gaming regulations in the December. So how is the impact going to be like for not only uh, the gaming side, but is the regulation fear still coming into play? Uh, for example, for the 2023, I think the impact was mainly on internet uh, property and then the ending was gaming industry. How will the 2024 outlook go for? for the fears for regulation risk? Okay. Uh, we think that it will be balanced by uh, some uh, relaxation. Uh, you notice that uh, following the uh, announcement of the draft uh, to, the, uh, to the article, it's called uh, Article 18, uh, the, uh, that uh, uh, regulate the online uh, uh gaming operate online games operators uh subsequently the authority uh approved uh more than 100 games uh, just a few days after uh this uh, draft was being announced i think they are trying to uh to soothe the market um uh, fears that uh the that the draft was too stringent so they increased the number of um, uh, games uh, approved uh, lately. In, the, in 2023, monthly average uh, new games being approved by the authority uh, stood around 80, between 80 to 90, so just 80 plus, okay? So lately, the number of new uh, games being approved uh, uh, early this year, or uh, uh, yeah, early this year, uh, uh, was up to uh, more than 100. It's 108, I, I, I think, around that. So 20 uh, more than the average number uh, last year. So I think in going forward, they may speed up or they may increase the number of uh, new games being approved. On the other hand, they will try to regulate on the spending. Now, I think they are more concerned about in the past, their concern is uh, teenagers uh, 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 are spending too much time uh, playing online games. So they roll out uh, rules to uh, regulate, to control uh, the time that uh, uh, teenagers can play online games uh, to around two hours um, uh, only on weekends and during uh, holidays. Okay, uh, Now they are concerned about the spending, uh, overspending by uh, players, online game players. Uh, so the impact on the uh, the publishers, uh, the game publishers will be, their profitability will be undermined. That's quite for sure, uh, because they earn the revenue that, uh, from the spending, uh, in-game spending, uh, but, and also the 
uh, purchase of uh, in-game items uh, to play the games uh, from the players in the uh, they, they they earn this is the revenue model uh, they earn from these sources so with the new uh, uh, revised uh, guidelines uh, we do believe that the profitability of companies uh, uh, with especially I mentioned just now with high Apple games will be uh, impacted more uh, uh, the Apple will come down but uh, so uh, maybe in in future, uh, we see more games being approved that may uh, help a bit uh, the, uh, the, the operators. And also they may develop more high DAV, daily average active users, low uh, Apple games. They may develop more low Apple games to get more users. Uh, and uh, they will change the revenue model. In the past, it is uh, high uh, 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 Apple, Apple uh, model. Now it's high DAU and low Apple model. So they have to uh, uh, make, uh, make up their loss of uh, revenue by uh, uh, rolling out more games, more, more uh, low Apple games. Right, thank you. <clears throat> for the next one, maybe I was just asked about uh for China, right? Because they have a slowing economy, and uh, we're talking about both Hong Kong and China, uh, in terms of the stock market performance. So, how effective can China uh, actually use any physical or monetary policy to actually help to boost the economy for this year? Uh, looking at the impact is that currently uh they have do have a both external. Uh, issues internal and meaning external meaning example they have uh, more tighter relations between the US and the Western countries. Uh, so how effective will their policies be, especially with uh, the interest rate environment currently in the US that is still on a higher side, even though they might be coming down soon. Yeah, admittedly, uh, we are afraid that the effect will be rather limited. Whatever fiscal policy and monetary policies. As I mentioned uh, on the first hand, uh, the Chinese government uh, uh, refrains from uh, rolling out very aggressive uh, kind of uh, stimulus packages. So that's uh, uh, first thing uh, that we don't expect any uh, uh, trillions type of uh, four trillion uh, stimulus package uh, as they uh, did uh, 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 many years ago uh, in 2008, okay? Uh, even rate cuts, you, you notice that last year they did two rate cuts, each by only 10 basis points, not even up to one percentage uh, basis, uh, percentage point, uh, uh, not up to 25 basis point, only 10 basis point. So it's very gradual. Uh, 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 gradual uh, policies, will uh, uh, result in uh, gradual improvement in the economy. So the recovery we expect uh, will remain rather uh, slow. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's also uh, some structural problems uh, that uh, need longer time uh, to resolve. For instance, the uh, property developers debt crisis and also the uh, downturn in the property market. We don't expect that can be uh, uh, improved overnight. Uh, it may take years uh, to uh, solve the debt uh, problems and also to uh, uh, take years for us to see a revival in the property market, especially in uh, many third tier and fourth tier, fourth tier cities. Uh, the there is oversupply of uh, uh, residential property that would take also years for the market to uh, take up, uh, digest uh, the, the oversupply, okay? And uh, the US-China uh, 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 tension will also, uh, uh, we also expect it to, uh, continue. Uh, we not. We will not see any uh, uh, sub. I uh, mean, sharp turn uh, in in the near term. So this will all uh, uh, track on the, uh, the 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 macro economy for the time being. 
All right. Okay, so so just, just now you also mentioned that currently in the current climate, uh, looking at uh, the current stock market, maybe uh, we can actually look at the utilities as well as the telecommunications as a defensive sector. But because also we see that now Hong Kong is also on a lower side, in, uh, Hong Kong and China, the stock market performance is already a lower side compared to the past few years. So let's say we are looking to position ourselves for a longer term, perhaps two to five years. Do you propose that we look at the more growth sector, uh, like example, the AI team, your EV, your semiconductor, or actually we still should actually look at the defensive like utilities and also uh, the telecommunications for 2024 itself? Okay. Um, uh, we still uh, advise investors to be uh, more, uh, to be better, to be uh, more risk adverse. So that's why we recommend uh, defensive plays such as utilities and telecommunications and uh, local Hong Kong companies that are less exposed to the uh, to China's economy. So these are double protection. First of all, uh, the industry itself, uh, utility and telecommunications are defensive by nature, more defensive by nature. And secondly, their business is more uh, uh, outside China. Uh, for power assets, uh, it does have uh, overseas, I mean, just now I uh, have been, I mean, in my introduction of uh, power assets, it has business in other countries such as UK, Australia, uh, and Europe as well. Uh, so it's more diversified in terms of geographical uh, risk, okay? Uh, but for investors, uh, they who are, uh, 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 besides that, uh, besides the you uh, the dividend you uh, that uh, that uh, start that start looking uh, at more attractive following the uh, US entering a rate cut cycle. Uh, uh, besides that, uh, we think over time uh, when the uh, economy, when China's economy and the Hong Kong local economy stabilize, there will be a time. I mean, it may take longer. Uh, when it stabilizes, then we expect a revaluation. Uh, in the in their uh, uh, in the share price, so investors investing uh, in these companies first, uh, they will uh, the they will earn uh, the the dividend uh, return, as well as an expected uh, revaluation, because now as you mentioned, uh, the valuation is uh, quite quite cheap. Uh, it uh, deserves a. Uh, a revaluation once the economy, uh, once things brighten up, uh, once the economy uh, stable stabilizes. Uh, uh, for uh, we also like uh, environmental protection uh, uh, businesses. Uh, maybe in China, uh, recently we noticed that some uh, water treatment companies such as Be uh, uh, Beijing. Uh, water, uh, the stick ticker is 371.hk371, and uh, Everbright uh, Water, uh, they are uh, seeing their uh, share price, more uh, increase in turnover, uh, more uh, inflow funds in uh, flowing in, and also the share price strengthening. So uh, environment uh, uh, protection industry will, will tend to be uh, less cyclical, uh, not uh, very much uh, affected by economic cycles. So utilities, tel telecom operators, as well as uh, environment, uh, environmental companies. Okay, so before I move to the q and I have one last question. Uh, actually, this is actually on the aspect of there's uh, these two teams that usually have been growing for the last few years is the technology side and the EV. All right, so we now know that recently there's a lot of uh, cross investments. So like the EV uh, companies coming out with their mobile phone and some mobile phone companies coming out with their own EVs as an ecosystem uh, play. So how do you feel this um, development will actually come into play seeing that, let's say, Apple, Xiaomi coming into EV market and EV might trying to go into the mobile space? 
what is the impact that you actually expect um, for these two sectors or these two industries itself? Okay. Uh, one thing for sure is China's EV market will uh, become more uh, competitive. The competition will become more intense. Uh, 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 since December last year, uh, you heard almost every day reports that uh, the EV manufacturers are uh, uh, offering uh, different kind of uh, promotion packages, uh, which is actually uh, price cuts uh, uh, to their products. Uh, lately, it's uh, uh, Lee Auto. Uh, that's why Lee Auto share price dropped by uh, uh, substantially the last few days because uh, following the uh, report of its uh, price cut uh, 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 of uh, all of its L7, L8, and L9 series. And Tesla is also uh seen continuing cutting uh prices because of the uh competition uh, getting more intense uh this competition is uh, uh aggravated by uh, more new entrants into the ev uh in arena uh, for instance you mentioned just now uh handphone uh manufacturers uh, uh, such as huawei uh, Xiaomi and Meizu, uh, now they uh, all have plans to uh, uh, manufacture EVs. Actually, Huawei uh, already had uh, uh, rolled out their EV products and Xiaomi is expected uh, maybe this year or next year, uh, the, the EV. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, the new forces, new EV forces, the uh, uh, so-called mm -hmm. Uh, Hui Xiaoli uh, in the past now was replaced by uh, uh, another uh, new uh, new new forces uh, I would describe it in such a way in the past the new uh, three new forces EV new forces are namely Li Otto, Neil and Xiaopeng now it, they are replaced by Huawei uh, Xiaomi and uh, Meizu uh, for these telco operators, I think they do have an advantage, competitive advantage over uh, the, uh, the, the, the EV make, uh, manufacturers, the car auto uh, manufacturers, because they have the uh, expertise in um, uh, handphone and also now uh, increasingly an EV, uh, electric vehicle, uh, operates, functions more like a handphone or PC. Uh, so uh, Huawei uh, who, uh, and Xiaomi, uh, which have their own operating operating system, OS, uh, will uh, uh, have a more uh, competitive advantage compared to, I mean, uh, in the trend of digitalization and uh, automation. Uh, so uh, they can uh, tap on their uh, the OS, handphone OS operating system design expertise to uh, uh, to, uh, to make the, the, the cars uh, more powerful in the sense uh, in terms of digitalization and uh, automation. And uh, they, they can, I mean, uh, they be less vulnerable to price uh, cuts if the products are becoming too commoditized. All right, thank you, Louis. So we would like to move on to the Q and A, which I do see there's quite a lot of upvoted questions already. So do keep your questions coming if you have any, or if you upvote the questions that you are more concerned on. So currently, the first most upvoted question is actually what is the view on Alibaba, Meituan, and Pingan? These three particularly. Alibaba, Meituan, and which one? Ping An. Uh, Ping An. Uh, among the three, we are more downbeat on Meituan and uh, Ping An. Uh, Alibaba, uh, we are neutral. Uh, we have a neutral rating. Uh, first for Alibaba, it's also it's, uh, facing um, uh, more competition from uh, other competitors such as Ping Toto, 
not not only in China but also in uh overseas uh, uh Tianmu uh, is doing quite very well uh, under P Pindodo and then uh other uh not e-commerce operators uh, besides JD and Pindodo we also noticed that uh companies like Kwai Shou uh, uh, uh and those short video operators and uh Douyin uh, they are entering uh, the e-commerce arena. And the cloud uh, services, once uh, fast, fast growing, uh, fast uh, growing uh, growth engine uh, for Alibaba, now uh, is under tremendous uh, competition from uh, Chinese, Chinese telco operators such as uh, China Mobile, China Telecom, and uh, Unicom. Uh, Alibaba used to have more than 50% market share in the cloud uh, service market. Now it has uh, decreased to uh, close to 30%. So, and also uh, the growth rate, uh, uh, at most you only see single digit growth uh, in revenue. Uh, in its uh, cloud uh, business uh, uh, division. And, it, and, and, and perhaps because of the decline in profitability, Alibaba has announced that it plans to uh, uh, distribute, uh, to spin off the cloud uh, business division and uh, distribute it uh, in the form of physical shares to its shareholders. Yet, because of the market sentiment, uh, this did not uh, materialize last year. And also uh, the other listing plans of, uh, for instance, Cai Niao uh, and He Ma Xian Sang both uh, uh, were, were called off uh, uh, last year. Uh, so uh, there was also a report that uh, uh, it is other uh, 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 growth growth driver, uh, the Zifu Bao, uh, the Alipay, um, uh, it, it may it may it is considering uh, handing it over to the state. Uh, so this will all weaken the profitability of and also the growth uh, prospect, uh, growth outlook of Alibaba. Uh, this one uh, we are because it has share price. Uh, has dropped. I mean, uh, in view of this uh, valuation share price, so uh, this uh, for Alibaba, our rating is neutral. Uh, uh, let me see the share price. Give me a few seconds. Um, now it's very close to uh, the December low, around uh, $67. So if it uh, dropped below the uh, $67.80, that was the low seen in December last year. Uh, today it dropped by more than 2%, uh, now trading at $68.55, uh, uh, 65 uh, fifty five uh, sixty eight dollar fifty five cents. If it uh, uh drop below sixty seven eighty, we're looking at the next support level around sixty five uh dollars. Whereas resistance is expected around uh seventy to seventy two Hong Kong dollars. For Mei Tuan, uh also facing uh severe competition from uh Erlema and also uh, new entrance to the uh, food delivery uh, the industry, such as Douyin. Uh, uh, that's why Meijun is planning uh, to go overseas, and Hong Kong is the first uh, trial uh, market. Uh, but it seems Hong Kong is also very uh, saturated already, the delivery uh, food delivery market. We have uh, Food Panda as well as uh, Delivery Rule. 
even Uber Eat uh, uh, cannot survive in Hong Kong. So uh, Meituan's Kita, uh, whether it can uh, survive uh, and uh, uh, is uh, remains a, a question remains to be seen. Okay, the share price uh, it is even weaker than um, Alibaba uh, sawing new low recently. Let me see today. Three six, uh, yeah. Uh, the the recent low was sixty nine fifty five. So we expect support uh, around seventy dollars. And today it was down more than three percent. Uh, to seventy three dollar fifteen cents. Uh, the overtrend overall trend is uh still a downtrend. Uh, we expect support around seventy uh seventy Hong Kong dollars and resistance around seventy five. Okay. Uh, the other one is uh, Ping An. Ping An, uh, because of its investment in certain property developers in China, and also now uh, the, uh, 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 the low interest rate uh, environment in China also doesn't, uh, is not favorable to uh, insurance company. Uh, who uh, it it will become more difficult for them to uh earn a decent return for its uh insurance premium. Uh, the uh, to, it's very close to the fifty two week low thirty one dollar fifty. Now it's trading at thirty one eighty five cents today. The low uh intraday low was thirty one seventy. So we expect uh it's still on a downtrend. Uh, it will test the thirty uh Hong Kong dollar support uh in the near term. Whereas uh, uh, uh if the share price uh rebounds, uh, we expect resistance around uh thirty three to thirty five dollars. Right. Thank you, Luis. The next question we do have is a uh, question uh, by one of the audience is explaining why the financial stocks like the big four banks and Ping An listed on both China and Hong Kong have a great a greater uh, price difference of around 20 to 30 percent. This always happened. This is known as the A share premium. Because Asia market is is still close to foreign investors, uh, now foreign investors can uh, uh with the stock connect they can uh, uh go through the stock connect. But uh, even with the stock connect, investors cannot arbitrate uh on the two uh markets. That means uh, uh for for arbitrage uh, uh you if you want to make profit from uh the arbitrage uh you may. Uh, buy uh, the X share uh, listed in Hong Kong at a lower price and then transfer uh, the shares, the X shares, convert it into A share in, uh, in China and then sell on the A share market to earn, uh, uh, to get a higher price. But this is not possible because there's no direct transfer of X shares, uh, shares between Hong Kong and uh, uh, Shanghai and Shenzhen uh, shares okay. Uh, investors can trade through the via uh, the stock connect on the individual market and settle on the individual market, but they, they, they cannot transfer the shares to another exchange or another uh and sell on the other market. So, uh, uh, the premium uh reflects that mainland investors have a different uh, I mean, the valuation uh, mainland investors. Uh, are willing to uh, uh, give to these companies a much higher uh, than uh, uh, Hong Kong investors, uh, uh, especially international investors re re uh, demand a much lower valuation uh, for risk, uh, a, a risk reward. Uh, so that, that this A premium has, uh, is in existence for Quite many years, and we don't expect a uh, narrowing between in the premium until uh, actual arbitrage 
uh, becomes available and uh, feasible uh, between the two markets. All right, thank you. So another one is actually um, the broker analysts have recommended that investors buy quality high yield stocks to defend the continuing market downtrend. So what is the view on the on this and any particular stock you can recommend for high yield investment? So I think just now you mentioned some already for your defensive one. So, so is there any other counters you might want to look at? Um. Okay. Uh, coal uh, mining companies such as uh, Shenhua, uh, Yan Kuang, uh, uh, Mei Ziyuan, uh, one one seven one. Shenhua sticker uh, on the Hong Kong market is one zero eight eight, and Zhongmei Nengyuan one eight nine eight. Uh, uh, they are also paying the dividend yield is more than ten percent. So, uh, coal mining. Uh, I mean, the coal supply is uh, currently on a, a, a balanced uh, situation. There's no oversupply. And uh, sometimes uh, there is also tendency for coal uh, prices to uh, to rise. Uh, 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 say, for instance, if China uh, 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 bans import of Australia, uh, of uh, uh, foreign coal uh, uh, from Australia and Indonesia when in the last two years uh, when they banned uh, imports from Australia and Indonesia the domestic companies benefit okay and uh, I think going forward uh, you may see uh, more cold winters like this year uh, uh, you may have uh, 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 seen reports about the severe cold weather in the northeastern part of China. So that will also uh, create uh, more demand for coal. Uh, so coal companies uh, with uh, dividend yield more than 10%, I think also uh, worth considering. Uh, the three companies I mentioned, uh, Senhua 1088, uh, one, uh, Yan Mei, Yan Mei Neng Yuan 1171, and uh, Zhong Mei Neng Yuan 1898. Uh, besides in the uh, oil and gas sector, I think CNUC uh, also paying uh, 10, more than 10% dividend yield. Uh, with, uh, uh, we are not particularly upbeat on uh, oil prices. We think oil prices, uh, they are both uh, positive factors and negative factors. So it's like uh, 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 rather neutral kind of uh, uh, the uh, for WTI. You notice that the price uh, always fluctuate between sixty five US dollar and seventy five. Yes, at the, there are both uh, positive factors and as well positive factors. The uh, is uh, the OPEC plus they uh, they are. Uh, cutting their, their uh, coal output. But on the other hand, uh, negative factors uh, will be more on the demand side with China's uh, recovery still not strong enough. So uh, demand for oil and gas will be, uh, for crude oil uh, will be uh, affected. And also uh, US, whether uh, there is a slowdown or a mild recession will also affect uh, demand from the U.S., which is the largest consumer uh, of crude oil in the world. Uh, but uh, since there are both uh, positive and negative uh, factors, uh, we, we think oil prices would be rather stable. Uh, it will fluctuate between a, 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 a tight range. It will be rather stable. And so CNU, which is more on the upstream, is business more on the upstream business, business will uh, benefit from uh, relatively stable uh, oil prices and uh, its dividend yield looks attractive. So AA3, CNUC is also uh, one suggest one recommendation uh, for investors who are looking for high yield stocks. Okay, so next we also have a question on regarding uh, how does power assets compare with the CK infrastructure? Uh, I never like how uh tower assets, Zhongguo Tie Ta, right? Uh, are you, are you referring to uh China Tower? Is it? No, uh, power, power assets. assets. 
how I said versus the compared CK to what? Infra. Sorry, compared CK to... infra. A uh, CK infra, CK yes, infra, uh, is uh hold actually the uh shareholding relations is uh CKI holds uh Power SS and Power SS holds uh this uh Hong Kong Electric, but if you look at the dividend yield, uh, just compare the dividend yield. Now Power SS dividend yield is slightly higher than uh CK uh infrastructure. So if we choose among the the uh, the two uh, between the two uh, companies based on which one is uh, paying I mean uh, uh, yielding higher, it sh it should be power still power assets. And CKI uh, is also a good company since listing is every year it increased despite uh, economic uh, upturn or downturn. Every year it increased. Uh, is dividend payout. So CKI is also good. Huh? Right. So next, we also have questions on uh, SMIC and uh, China Mobile. Okay. Uh, SMIC uh, 981, uh, the uh, policy risk or the, uh, it always uh, falls victim to uh, US and China tension. Uh, 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 so if you look at the share price, it's also on a, a consistent downtrend. If it's not able to uh, acquire the equipment for manufacturing uh, more advanced uh, chips, uh, namely uh, seven or five or even uh, down to two, three nano uh, meter chips, then it may uh, over over the long run, it may lose out. At the moment, it's still uh there's still demand for its uh mass uh market product. For instance, the forty five nanometer and twenty eight nanometer. There's still uh, uh great demand for those products, and uh, especially uh is com uh uh TM uh Taiwan Semiconductor TSMC and Samsung are no longer producing those uh, relatively low rent, uh, 45 and 28 nanometer chips. So it gives the, uh, the room to uh, SMIC. Uh, but going forward, these products may be, uh, may be uh, become uh, obsolete uh, and the, the demand will decrease then uh, it will be a problem for the company uh, in the long term. Okay, China Mobile, uh, the, the yield is attractive and also the uh, business uh, nature is also uh, quite de defensive. Uh, we also like China Mobile and among the three telco operators, its competitive uh, advantage is uh, the, uh, the greater uh, compared to China Telecom and uh, China Unicom. Now it's yielding 6.6% um, dividend yield. So uh, yes, it's also one stock uh, other than Hong Kong. If you, if you want one uh, that has exposure uh, mainly uh, to China, then China Mobile is also uh, worth considering. Okay, thank you. So uh, there's one question on this. Uh, what is three most important takeaway? that you might want to give uh, the audience for Hong Kong and China for this year? Okay. Uh, first of all, the headwinds uh, we are facing, uh, there are still a lot of headwinds. Uh, you can go to, through my slides. Uh, what are the uh, headwinds that the Hong Kong and China are facing? Uh, so the other takeaway is uh, we don't think there are quick fixes uh, to China's uh, economic problem. Uh, you will take time. Uh, for the debt crisis, uh, and also uh, U.S. and China uh, relationship to uh, improve. So uh, the last, uh, our last recommendation is uh, go for the uh, investors uh, to advise to rec uh, to advise investors to be more risk averse and uh, go for the defensive plays such as utilities 
and uh, telcos. Okay. So we also have another question is, uh, just a more generic one is, should we still invest in China for 2024 or should we scale back on the investment? Before, uh, there are evidences that uh, the uh, economic growth, uh, uh, economic recovery uh, uh, picks up. Uh, I, 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 we still recommend uh, lower uh, allocation uh, to China, uh, uh, albeit some uh, uh, investment houses now uh, view that China is uninvestable. I think that's quite extreme. Now. We don't we we won't say China is is uninvestable. Yet we still recommend a, a smaller uh, portion, a lower allocation of your assets to China for the time being. Okay. So next one we have uh, is what is the outlook for the green energy industry? I think just now you mentioned slightly. And uh, companies like CATL and BYD have dropped uh, significantly in the last few months. So is there a silver lining in this uh, green energy sector? Yeah. Uh, we noticed that the uh, installation, uh, capacity installation for solar, uh, photovoltaic, uh, will uh, grow faster than wind power. So solar power, we are more upbeat on solar power. Uh, 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 there is one, we, we, we favor the uh, solar glasses manufacturer. Uh, this 6865 flat glass uh, uh, because it's the market leader and now so uh, uh, solar glasses uh, one at, at one time uh, it faced oversupply now uh, it's more or less supply and demand is more balanced and uh, with the uh, uh, decline in silicon prices uh, uh, the uh, cost for setting up uh, solar farms now has uh, uh, come down. So we do expect more demand for uh, solar glasses. And uh, this is uh, this flat glass, a company called flat glass 6865 uh, will uh, stand to benefit from uh, the, uh, it, uh, the installation will not only come from China, but also from Europe and uh, the US. Uh, Europe uh, 2024 uh, in store capacity, capacity is expected to grow by 16%. Uh, and US is expected to grow by 33% uh, photovoltaic uh, in store capacity. Okay. Uh, now, currently, we have one is uh, what is the latest assessment on the JD.com? Oh, uh, we think it's even in a, a worse situation compared to uh, Alibaba. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the e-commerce uh, uh, industry in China is under tremendous uh, competition. And then uh, Alibaba, it has, it's more diversified in, in a sense. Uh, it has other uh, new businesses, but for JD.com, uh, is less diversified compared to uh, Alibaba. Uh, it's more uh, relying on uh, e-commerce. Okay, uh, and now it's also facing uncertainty with its strategic uh, business transformation. In the past, it operates more like a third-party platform uh, for a platform for third-party. Uh, uh, third-party brands. Uh, but now, uh, going forward, it, it, it is uh, adopting a business strategy, strategy of uh, direct operation. So it will source its own merchandise uh, that, uh, that uh, will bring higher profit margin uh, to the company. But whether this uh, transformation, this business strategy transformation will uh, bear fruit uh, is not certain yet, uh, remains to be seen. Okay. So actually, I looked through the Q&A. There's one that is uh, actually that we haven't touched much today. Is What is the view on Yam and also Meng Miu, which are the consumer counters 
ของของ China the view on what sorry uh, Yum China and Meng view oh Yum China yeah uh, I like Yum uh, because uh, it has a very uh, stable uh, expansion plan uh, now is uh, restaurants in China has grown to more than 10,000 and it has a medium term uh, medium term uh, target of uh, opening 20, up to 20,000 outlets uh, restaurants uh, in China and uh, even uh, during the COVID uh, periods of, uh, from 2019 to 2023 uh, uh, Yum Brand China, uh, uh, we, we saw uh, that Yum Brand China is still opening more restaurants in China, uh, is by no means affected by the, uh, the, the pan, uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, uh, but uh, its share price weakened recently is because uh, there was a drop in its gross profit margin. Okay, So until uh, there are uh, evidence that uh, shows the an improvement that is cross profit margin improves. Uh, its share price will, will still be under uh, selling pressure uh, until the cross profit margin uh, picks up. Okay. okay. So in this continuing this chain of fashion, there's one more. Uh, like instead of the China ones, uh, they're looking at what about defensive Hong Kong based consumer stock. Which is like Vita Soy and Nissin. Mm. Vita Soy is very the price uh, is uh quite pricey. Uh and now uh it's no longer a Hong Kong play because uh in the first six months ended th September 30, 2023. I just uh, went through its uh, uh interim results. 57% of its revenue came from China. It has expanded into China. So for a time, uh, a lot of institutional investors like Vitasoy because of its expansion plan, a bigger market, much bigger market in China. But now China, uh, the, uh, the, the, the growth uh, has stalled. Uh, so it becomes a, uh, instead of uh, uh, being an asset to the company, it becomes a liability, a burden. And then the yield is very low, 1% yield. Uh, 30 times PE, uh, not really uh, worth looking at at the current uh, valuation and the uh, dividend yield and also the uh, business outlook as 50%, uh, more than 50% of its revenue comes from uh, China, mainland China, mainland China. It has tried, in the past, it has tried to uh, expand into uh, Australia and New Zealand and Singapore, uh, you can buy uh, Vita Soy products in Singapore as well. But both markets uh, in the last six months uh, in the uh, financial uh, first half uh, in up to end of uh, September 2023, Australia and New Zealand and Singapore all recorded uh, operating losses. So they uh, don't make profits in other overseas markets. Okay. So uh, because of time uh, itself, we will be looking at the last two or three questions. So first one, uh, the one that we, uh, what do you recommend um, some of the investors that currently hold existing EV companies, uh, Hong Kong counters, like Li Auto and Expert? Do you recommend them to actually hold or maybe is there any like, bearish view on these counters? Yeah. Uh, Li Auto has uh, uh, announced their uh, 2024 sales target 800,000 uh, uh, vehicles units so that implies every month it has to sell at least 65,000 uh, which may be challenging uh, at this kind of uh, market uh, environment and especially if they uh, if they want like last year uh, the, close to the end of uh, 2023, you, you, we, we saw that uh, more than 20 uh, EV brands in China uh, cut prices because they wish they, uh, they are under pressure to meet their annual sales target. So uh, with uh, 800,000 sales target for 224, uh, 
uh, I think uh, it first of all the target is quite challenging, and secondly, if it fails to uh, meet it, it will uh, add more pressure uh, on on the company to uh, cut prices to in order to meet the sales target. So uh, I think BYD is a safer bet uh, and it's less aggressive in setting its sales uh, target after reaching uh, more than 2 million units last year. And uh, BYD is more diversified uh, in, geographically. So I think uh, you may switch, uh, do a switching, uh, sell Lee Auto and uh, buy BYD. Although BYD share price we do expect it may not hold above two hundred dollars, and if it uh drop uh breaches the support of two hundred Hong Kong dollars, uh uh downside next target maybe it may uh go as low as hundred eighty. So uh be careful la. Uh, watch out la. Right. So maybe we can have our last question is a. Uh... What are some of the business and regulatory risks that will be facing your two stock counters recommendation just now for Howard Asset and, and uh, HKT? Are there any business or regulation type of uh, risk that they are facing? Okay. Power Assets, uh, as I mentioned, its business portfolio is very diversified, uh, mainly in the UK, uh, Australia. Those are developed uh, economies. So, uh the is a regulated business uh uh yet uh it's predictable uh it will not be uh like some uh emerging countries or in china sometimes the uh regulations and policy uh initiatives are uh quite unpredictable so uh, i think uh, the visibility is uh higher for for both companies and uh hong kong tea it mainly uh, uh, operates in Hong Kong. I think uh, not much uh, policy risk is less uh, a lesser concern. Uh, uh, factors that may in, uh, impact its business uh, will be uh, the uh, its roaming business will depend very much on cross-border uh, travel and also demand for new uh, handphones, uh, those uh, more related to con consumption. All right. Okay, so uh, we have, we're at 155 right now. All right, I'd like to thank Louis again for the presentation and the interactive Q&A that we have. So we have now come to the end of the webinar for today, and we'd like to thank everyone for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon. Right for this session just now, we will be uploading the recording on the Philly Capital Facebook page and YouTube. You may actually view the recording on uh, your own timing, right? So we also have many other interesting uh, webinar going on almost every other day. So you may view our full list of free webinars on our website as well. So do also take your time to fill in the survey that we have to improve your experience that you have uh, with us for today for the future. So you, can make, you may scan a QR code or copy the survey link in the chat tab for this survey itself, right? So we also have uh, interesting communities all right, in our Poems 3.0 app. So you can get a full access to our research reports and discussion on technical analysis among other topics, right? So you can just uh, download the P3, Poems 3.0 app, and then you can actually access uh, this community itself. Okay, so once again, thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you tomorrow. For tomorrow, we will have our speakers from Thailand market to discuss topics including the interest rate upcycle, its impact on SET, listed firms, government support in Thailand, and the influence of global economies on Thailand economy itself. So stay tuned, take care and have a nice day ahead.